Hello, GED math students. Let's look at some questions in which you can't use a calculator on the GED math test. I'm going to do five sample questions in this video. Let's jump into question one. It says a scale drawing of a house uses a scale of 0 0.5 inches equals 2 feet. What is the length in inches of a line on the scale drawing that represents an actual length of 5 feet? Let's highlight this final question. And you actually have access to an electronic highlighter on the GED math test. And why is this important? Well, let's see. Let's see what it's asking. It says, what is the length in inches? That's what I'm looking for, the length in inches. So that tells me that these answers are inches. In other words, this represents 1.25 inches. This represents 10 inches and so on. And what I'm trying to figure out is if I have an actual length of 5 feet, how would that show up on my scale drawing in inches? So let's, let's go ahead and work this out. You can set up a proportion to do this. I don't do it that way. There's more than one way to do it. I'm just going to make a table of values like this. And I'm going to, on my table, put inches from here. And I'll put feet here. And what I'm going to write here is 0 0.5 right here. And 2 from right here over here. So really what this means is for every 0 0.5 inches on my scale drawing, it's 2 feet in reality. It's actually 2 feet. And what I'm going to do is just count by 0.5s here. So let's count by 0.5s. The next one would be 1 then 1.5, and then 2. Let's think about this, uh, about this for a second. I mean, 0 0.5, you, you can tack on a 0 here. It doesn't change anything. And if this, are, this is 50 cents, I'm just like counting by 50 cents. 50 cents, $1, $1.50, dollars $2. Now, over here, I'm going to count by 2s, which is easier to do. So this is 2, 4, six, eight. I'm just counting by twos here. So let's make sure we understand what's going on. If the scale drawing is 0 0.5 inches and it's actually two feet in the real world. Um, let's go down here. If it's two inches on the scale drawing, it's actually eight feet. Now the question is, if the actual length is five feet, how many inches will that be on the scale drawing? So what I need to do is find five feet on my table. Well, the feet are over here. Let's see, here's two feet, four feet, six feet, eight feet. I don't have five feet exactly, but I know it's got to fall between four, six, and feet, between four feet and six feet. So the five feet falls right here. That tells me that my scale drawing in inches has to be somewhere between one inch and 1.50 inches. I'll put a zero here. So my scale drawing number has to be somewhere between 1 inch and 1.50 inches. Well, which answer falls between 1 inch and 1.50 inches? Hopefully you can see that that is A, right? Because 1.25 falls between 1 inch and 1.5 inches right here. So A is my answer. The rest of them are too big. This is too big, this is too big, and so on. So that's how you do this using a table. Question two, it says, which expression below represents the distance from X to Y on the number line, from X to Y? So let's see. I see this word distance right here. Um, let me highlight that. Whenever you see distance, your answer will be positive. There's no such thing as negative distance. Now, these symbols here represent distance or, an, uh, or absolute value, kind of the same thing. So when you see these symbols and you see distance, this is how you symbolically write distance. So I'm thinking my answer probably has to include these distance symbols. And the only two that include those are C 
and B. A and B do not include these distance symbols, so I can probably get rid of A and B. If I'm running out of time at this point, I could guess C or D. However, I, I, I want to go through each one so you clearly understand this. So um, let's just go back to finding the distance between X and Y. It says between X and Y, or from X to Y. So from X to Y right here. Let's just count. Let's pretend X is home and Y is school, and I'm walking from home to school. How many units would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven units. So I walked seven units. Now, remember, it's positive. If I were to walk from school back to home, if it said the distance from Y to X, it would still be seven units. I'm just walking in the other direction. I wouldn't say negative seven units. So remember, distance is always positive. So I got to see which one of these answer choices gives, gives me seven units. That's what I'm looking for. Whichever one gives me seven units is my answer. And again, we can probably eliminate A and B, but I want to show you why. What's negative four plus three? Does that give me seven? No. Negative four plus three is negative one. And you can see that on their number line. This means you start at negative four and you move to the right, plus means move to the right three. So if I start at negative four, I move to the right three, one, two, three, I end up at negative one. What about here? I, by, by the way, my answer is not A, because I need to get out seven units. It's minus four minus three. Well, this means I start at negative four and I move to the left three, because subtraction is moved to the left. So if I start at negative four, and I move to the left three, one, two, three, I would end up at negative seven. But I need to get out positive seven because it's distance. My answer has to be positive, so B's gone. What about C? Well, this these symbols mean distance or absolute value. So watch, I'm gonna write the I'm gonna bring these distance symbols over or absolute value symbols. And we already did negative four plus three right up here, that was negative one, so negative four plus three is negative one, and this means to take the absolute value of negative one. Well, what that means is how far is negative one from zero? Well, let's see, here's negative one, how far is negative one from zero? It's one unit. So this is just becomes one, this absolute value, or distance symbol, turns this negative one to positive. That doesn't work either, right, because I'm looking for a seven. So it's got to be D, but let's go ahead and go through it. So I bring over my absolute value symbols. What's negative 4 minus 3? We already did, did that up here. It's negative 7. And remember, this means how far is negative 7 from 0 on the number line? Well, negative 7 is over here, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units from 0. So remember, the absolute value, when you take it, it takes this number inside and turns it to positive. And you can see this matches up with what we were looking for. So I, I went through a long explanation. I just want to make sure you understand absolute value. Just let's practice here. What would the absolute value of 9 be? Not 9, let's do 6. What would the absolute value of 6 be? Well, this means how far is 6 from 0 on the number line? It, well, here's 6 and it's 1 two, three, four, five, six units. Doesn't matter the direction. What about the absolute value of negative six? How far is negative six from zero? Well, that's also six units, right? Here's negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So whenever you take the absolute value, your answer is positive. Hope that was helpful. Let's go to question three. This one's not too bad, but it's tricky. It says three square root seven plus square root seven. This is like combining like terms, all right? So what I'm thinking, well actually before I start this, there is a one right here. It's not showing. I call it a ninja one. It likes to play hide and seek. And that ninja one, I got that name from another teacher actually, but it's cool. I'm going to put in that ninja one. It's right here. It doesn't show up, so I put it here and here. What this is really asking is, 
I have three square root sevens plus one square root seven. How many total square root sevens do I have? So really what I'm gonna do is just add the three and the one. I'm just gonna add the outside numbers. Three plus one. Well, what's three plus one? That's four. And then I just bring the square root seven down because it's in common. I just bring it down. I don't add the square root sevens. And that's my answer. So not too bad. So think the following. Three square root sevens plus one square root sevens. I have a total of four square root sevens. And my answer is A. Again, don't make the mistake of adding the square root sevens. Just the numbers on the outside you add, the three and the one. The square root seven, you just bring it down. And remember to put in that ninja one when in a problem like this. Let's go to question four. Two more to go. It says, between which pair of decimals should four sevens be placed on a number line? This is a tricky one. Um, what I'm going to do is change four sevens to a decimal. And let me show you how I do that. You can rewrite four sevens like this. Seven into four. And you need to know how to do long division to do this. So hopefully you know how to do that. So when it's written like this, the denominator, the bottom number, goes on the outside. And the numerator, the top number, goes on the inside. And I'm going to divide 7 into 4. So how many times does 7 go into 4? It doesn't. Or another way to look at it is how many times does 7 come out of 4? You can't pull any 7s out of 4, so I'm going to put a 0 here. Now I can add a decimal here and add zeros. Think about it. Isn't 4 the same as 4.0? Yeah, they're the same thing. Now I say to myself, how many times does 7 go into 40? Well, some people get a little confused on this. You need to know your times tables. But before I do that, let me bring up this decimal point, And I'm thinking, how many times does 7 go into 40? Well, that's 5 times. And 7 times 5 is 35. Now. If I were to multiply 7 times another number and it goes over 40, I, I would be incorrect when I do this. Remember, when you multiply the 7 and the 5, this number that you get has to be less than 40. Now what I do is subtract 40 minus 35. Pretend that decimal point's not there. 40 minus 35 is 5. Now I'm going to go out to two decimal places. I'm going to add another 0. I'm going to bring down this 0. How many times does 7 go into 50? Well, let's see. I want to get as close to 50 as possible. That's going to be 7. I don't want to go over 50 when I multiply these two. And 7 times 7 is 49. I subtract and I get a 1. I'm going to stop right here. It's as far as I need to go. So I get 0 0.57. And now what I'm thinking to myself, let me make that a little better, 0 0.57. In other words, 4 sevenths is equal to 0 0.57. So I'm thinking to myself, 0 0.57 falls between which one of these decimals here? Well, just add zeros to these, right? You can put a zero here. It doesn't change anything. Because let's think about this. 0 0.3 means 30 cents. It In other words, I can just I can tack on a zero here. It doesn't change anything. Remember, and some students get this confused, they say 0 0.3 is 3 cents. No, that would be this way. That's 3 cents. But 0 0.3 means 30 cents. So I can just put zeros on the end of each one of these decimals. I'll do it here and here. So I'm thinking 30 cents, 40 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents, 50 cents, 60 cents, 60 cents, 70 cents. And this is 57 cents. So 57 cents falls between 50 cents and 60 cents. And my answer is C. One more to go. It says, which of the following is equivalent to x squared minus 25? If you know how to factor from algebra, you would know that x squared minus 25 is the difference of two perfect squares. And you can rewrite it like this. x plus 5 times x minus 5. Because if you multiply this times this, you will get this back. So I, if you know how to factor, you can tell right away your answer is B. But what if you don't know how to factor? 
that's when I use this powerful strategy called the plug-in strategy. Plug-in strategy. This is a great tool in your toolbox. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to pick some number for x randomly. And I usually pick x to be one of the following. I usually pick 2, 3, 5, or 10. I don't use 0 or 1 because those tend to get confusing. So I need to decide if I want x to be 2, 3, 5, or 10. I can really pick any one. They're, they're all going to work. But when I'm squaring a number, when I have a squared or an exponent, I tend to like to pick 10. Again, you don't have to pick 10. You can really pick any value you want. Just stay away from 0 or 1. You could pick 2, 3, or 5. It will work too. But when I'm squaring, I like to pick 10. So I'm going to pretend that x equals 10. Watch this. So I have this expression, x squared minus 25. And I'm going to pretend that x equals 10. So I'm going to replace this x with 10 right here. So let's see. I'll replace the x with 10. That becomes 10 squared. minus 25. 10 squared means 10 times 10, not 10 times 2. It means 10 times 10, which is 100, minus 25 equals 75. This is my target answer. I'm going to call this my target answer. So what I'm going to do now is plug in 10 to each one of these. I'll try A first, and whichever one comes out to 75 will be my answer. So let's plug in 10 for x here, because I have x equals 10. So what I'm going to have here is 10 minus 5 squared, right? Actually, let me clear this out so I have more room so you can clearly see this. This is going to be um, my target answer of 75. So I'm going to erase this and just keep the target answer. Remember, that was my target answer. 75. I just want to have more room here. So I'm going to replace this x with 10 from right here. So 10 minus 5 squared right here. What's 10 minus 5? That's 5 squared. 5 squared is 5 times 5. It's not 5 times 2, it's 5 times 5, which is 25. That does not match up with my target answer, so A does not work. Okay, let's try B. So remember, I'm, I use 10. I pick 10 for x. I'll replace this x with 10 and this x with 10. So watch how this works. 10, replace this x with 10, plus 5. Times, now there's a time sign here. It's not showing. It's kind of playing hide and seek. I'll put it in there, and then I'll replace this x with 10. So 10 minus 5. Again. Wherever I see an x, I put in a 10 for it here, 10 plus 5, and here, 10 minus 5 from right here. If I get the target answer of 75, b is my answer. So what's 10 plus 5? That's 15 times 10 minus 5 is 5. And 15 times 5 is 75. I'll do it for you up here real quick. 15 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25, carry your 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. So this matches up with my target answer. B has to be my answer. So that's a powerful strategy, the plug-in strategy. And you can do a problem like this even if you don't know how to factor. Well, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Have a great day.